I want to ask uh, you a question about how you've described your service in the National Guard. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that you carried weapons in war, but you have never deployed, actually, in a war zone. A campaign official said that you misspoke. Did you? Well, first of all, I'm incredibly proud. I've done 24 years of wearing the uniform of this country. Equally proud of my service in a public school classroom, whether it's Congress or, uh, or the governor. Uh, my record speaks for itself, but I think uh, people are coming to get to know me. I, I speak like they do. Um, I speak candidly. I wear my emotions on my sleeves, and uh, I speak uh, especially passionately about uh, about our children being shot in schools and around around guns. So uh, I think people know me. They know who I am. They know where uh, where my heart is. And again, my record has been out there for over 40 years to, to speak for itself. And the, the idea that you said that you were in war, yeah. did you misspeak as the campaign has said? Yeah, I said we were talking about, in this case, this was after a school shooting, the ideas of carrying these weapons of war. And uh, my wife, the English teacher, told me my grammar is not always correct, but again, if it's not this, it's an attack on my children for showing love for me or it's an attack on my dog. Uh, I'm not going to do that. And the one thing I'll never do is I'll never demean another member's service in any way. I never have uh, and I never will. I just one other question, because, again, this is all new. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This was not however many days ago. This was not uh, yeah. on either of your bingo cards, especially yours. Um, you had to clarify uh, that you had said that you and your wife w used IVF, but it turned out you used a different kind of fertility in order to uh, have children. And then when you ran for Congress in 2006, your campaign repeatedly made false statements about a 1995 arrest for drunk and reckless driving. What do you say to voters who aren't sure whether they can take you at your yeah. word? Well, I've been very public. I think they can see uh, my students come out. Uh, former folks I've served with, and, and they do, they vouch for me. I certainly own my mistakes when I make them. The one thing I'll tell you is of, um, I wished in this country we wouldn't have to do this. I spoke about our infertility issues because it's hell, and families know this. And uh, I, I spoke about the treatments that were available to us that, that had those beautiful children there. Um, that's quite a contrast in folks that are trying to, uh, to take those rights away from us. And so uh, I, uh, I think people know who I am. They know that record. They've seen that. I've taught thousands of students. I've been out there. And um, I, I won't apologize for speaking passionately, whether it's guns in schools or protecting of reproductive rights. Uh, the contrast could not be clearer between what we're running against. The vice president's position on this has been clear. And um, I think most Americans get it if you've been through that. Um, I don't think they're cutting hairs on IVF or IUI. I think what they're cutting hairs on is an abortion ban and the ability to be able to deny families the chance to have a beautiful child. Vice President Harris, you were a very staunch defender of President Biden's capacity to serve another four years. Right after the debate, you insisted that President Biden is extraordinarily strong. Given where we are now, do you have any regrets about what you told the American people? No, not at all. Not at all. I have um, served with President Biden um, for almost four years now, and I'll tell you, it's one of the greatest honors of my career, truly. Um, he cares so deeply about the American people. He is so smart and, um, and loyal to the American people. And I have spent hours upon hours with him, be it in the Oval Office or the Situation Room. He has the intelligence, the commitment, and the judgment um, and disposition that I think the American people rightly deserve in their president. By contrast, the former president has none of that. And so, um, one, I, I, I am so proud to have served as vice president to Joe Biden. And two, I am so proud to be running with Tim Walls for president of the United States and to bring America what I believe the American people deserve, which is a new way forward and turn the page on the last decade of what I believe has been um, contrary to where the spirit of our country really lies. But the last decade, of course, the last three and a half years has been part of your administration. I'm talking about an era that started about a decade ago where there is some suggestion, warped, I believe it to be, that the measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down instead of where I believe most Americans are, 
which is to believe that the true measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you lift up. That's what's at stake as much as any other detail that we could discuss in this election. Um, because we haven't had a chance to, to talk, I'm just curious, staying on President Biden, when he called you and said he was pulling out of the race, mm -hmm. what was that like? And did he offer to endorse you right away or did you ask for it? It was, um, it was a Sunday, so, so here, I'll, I'll give you a little too much information. Go for it. <laughs> There's no such thing, Madam Vice President. Um, my family was staying with us, and um, including my baby nieces. And we had just had pancakes and, you know, Auntie, can I have more bacon? Yes, I'll make you more bacon. And then we were going to we were sitting down to, to do a puzzle. <laughs> And the phone rang, and it was Joe Biden. And, um, and he told me what he had decided to do. And um, I asked him, are you sure? And he said, yes. And, um, and that's how I learned about it. And what about the endorsement? Did you ask for it? And he was very clear that he was going to support me. So when he called to tell you, he said, I'm pulling out of the race, and I'm going to support you. Well, my first thought was not about me, to be honest with you. My first thought was about him, to be honest. Um, I think history is going to show a number of things about Joe Biden's presidency. I think history is going to show that in so many ways it was transformative, be it on what we have accomplished around finally investing in America's infrastructure, investing in new economies, in new industries, what we have done to bring our allies back together and have confidence in who we are as America and grow that alliance, what we have done to stand true to our principles, um, including the, the, one of the most important international rules and norms, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity. And I think history is going to show not only has Joe Biden led an administration that has achieved those extraordinary successes, but the character of the man is one that he has been in his life and career, including as a president, quite selfless and puts the American people first. I just have to ask you both about two standout moments, aside, of course, from the addresses that you uh, both gave, but standout moments that were perhaps unexpected during the convention. You mentioned one of them, Governor. Uh, a moment that you shared, that the world shared with your son, Gus. You were speaking, the camera caught him, so incredibly proud of you, so emotional, saying, that's my dad. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know as a father I could have ever imagined that. I, I grateful for so many reasons to be on this ticket, but that moment, um, to understand what was really important, to, to have my son uh, feel a sense of pride in me, that I was trying to do the right thing. And uh, it was, um, you know, you try and protect your kids, you know, it brings, it brings notoriety and things, but it was just such a, uh, a visceral, emotional moment that I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful I got to experience it, and I'm, uh, I'm so proud of him. I'm proud of him, I'm proud of Hope, I'm proud of Gwen. She's a wonderful mother, and these are great kids. And I think the one thing is talking about the era we're in is our, our politics can be better, it can be different. We can, we can show some of these things, and we can have families involved in this. And I, I hope that there was a, I hope people felt that out there, and I hope they hug their kids a little tighter, because you just never know, and life can be kind of hard. And, and last question, uh, Madam Vice President, the photograph that has gone viral. Mm. You were speaking, one of your grandnieces that you were just yes. talking about was watching you accept the nomination. Mm -hmm. You didn't explicitly talk about gender or race in your speech, but it obviously means a lot to a lot of people and that yeah. viral picture really says it. What does it mean to you? You know, I, listen, I am running because I believe that I am the best person to do this job at this moment. Um, for all Americans, regardless of race and gender. Um, but I did see that photograph, and I was deeply touched by it. And you're right, she's, it's the back of her head, her two little braids, and, um, and then I'm in the front of the photograph, obviously speaking. And um, it's very humbling. It's very humbling in many ways. 
Did she talk to you about it afterwards? Oh, she had a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> she had a lot. She listened to everything. 